Hello, everybody. Welcome to Percussion Axiom TV. I'm your host, Tom Burrett, and I'm sitting here with Third Coast Percussion. And we are actually in between concerts at, at the Round Top Festival here in Round Top, Texas. And uh, those of you who have been watching the show, I've been maybe I've been overkilling the publicity of that. But um, anyway, uh, it's great to have these guys here, and I'm, it's really awesome that they, they're taking about 10 minutes here just to sit down. And we're going to talk a little bit about sort of how they started and some stories and stuff they've got going on right now and things that they're, you know, going to be doing uh, in the next year or so. So anyway, uh, this is uh, Rob Dillon here and Clay Condon, David Skidmore, and Peter Martin. So they're Third Coast, and they just played a really phenomenal, amazing concert, and uh, just so thrilled to have them as part of the festival. So guys, tell us a little bit about how you started and how you met. And we, all, uh, we all knew each other from Northwestern University. We all went there at different times, um, overlapping with each other in different ways, but uh, I was there before you. He, yeah. It's true. He yeah, was. True. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, the uh, the sort of origins of Third Coast Percussion as an ensemble. Uh, David and I were in the Civic Orchestra of Chicago, sort of the training orchestra that is affiliated with the Chicago Symphony. And um, the two of us and a couple other guys formed a percussion quartet to do outreach stuff, chamber music concerts with that. Um, and then kind of decided we wanted to keep it going on our own after that. Uh, shortly after that first season, the other guys, for because of various other commitments and leaving town, whatever, had to had to leave the group, and uh, we could think of no one better than Peter Martin and Clay Condon. So you were known as Third Coast at that point as well. Yeah, yeah, that somewhere like, over the course of the year. I think right before I got to Northwestern to do my DM, mm -hmm. you guys had like gotten or done your first concert, right? Yeah. In the summer or first like sort of self concertizing. So you guys came in from where then? Um, well, I just. Um, I did my master's at Northwestern, and uh, actually I'd gone to school with both David and Clay at one point at Northwestern. I think, yeah, that's the one thing that ties us all together, is that we were at, yeah, we were at Northwestern at one point or another. Northwestern um, Percussion Ensemble is a big part of the curriculum, so, yeah, yeah. and it's a uh, really important, I mean, it's just a really fun thing for us to do, and we wanted to do it a little bit more professionally, so um, I, had, I was coming from the East Coast uh, and came to start doing my uh, doctoral work. Clay was just finishing up his doctoral work and just started uh, teaching at Northeastern Illinois University. Um, and it just, yeah, it was the right fit. And uh, So would you say that uh, the sort of intensity that you had at Northwestern was sort of the initial spur to get things going? I think absolutely. It was something, you know, um, when you're, especially in a place like Northwestern and a lot of different, you know, uh, percussion programs around the country, the percussion ensemble is such a big part of the curriculum. Yeah. But, you know, there, there's not a lot of uh, avenue outside of academia, you know, to concertize, and that was something that we were really trying to make happen. You know. So this is year four for you guys already, right? Yeah. 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 It's fantastic. Yeah. So, um... You just finished up a tour recently. Oh, this is it, actually, right? This is it. Yeah. This is it. It's the um, culmination. Yeah. So talk to, talk to us a little bit about that and sort of where you were, and and uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about what repertoire and what you guys are up to. And so we, um, let's see, we started the tour in the middle of February. We visited uh, University of Illinois. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long month. We, uh, University of Illinois, Southeast Missouri State, um, Tennessee Tech, and the University of Kentucky. Yeah. Had about four days off, went home, slept. Uh, and then did, you have, did you have any bourbon with Campbell? In we might have had a little, <laughs> bit. <laughs> had just a little bit. Just a little. It was totally great. Everywhere we went was totally awesome. It was yeah, so cool that, to see yeah. so many different programs. Yeah. and People took uh, good care of us. Yeah, yeah, very much so. And then we came to Texas, and uh, we got to visit University of North Texas, Texas A&M Commerce, did a... Uh, percussion Festival at Tarleton State in Stephenville, and now we've been spending the week at University of Texas. Yeah, excellent, yeah. excellent. So, repertoire-wise, I'd love to hear your thoughts about sort of as you consider since you guys play in academia, but you also play general for general audiences. You know, yeah. tell us a little bit about how you go about programming and why certain pieces, and um, maybe even some philosophical issues about that. And, yeah. I think and what's all you know what's right. what all goes into that. I think the number one thing is just playing repertoire that we really, really enjoy, that are really, really passionate about. And then um, we, we have really sort of two main uh, performances or performance areas that we do, the Chicago concert season, uh, which is our home base in Chicago, and then this touring season. One of the big things that dictates, you know, uh, what we can do on tour is, you know, just logistics and instruments and being able to cart instruments everywhere. So our touring repertoire does vary a little bit from a Chicago concert season where we can pretty much you know pull out all the stops and do anything we want to do. So if you're in the Chicago area, <laughs> right, you got to check these guys out because they're there. How many concerts do you do on, as a part of that uh, series? We do about four a year. This is our. We just are going to be completing our 
first season uh, in about two weeks. We're doing a concert on April seventh, and then. Um, you know, so that's be, right around the corner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and where's no, that concert? That's, <laughs> that's it. Uh, <laughs> Chopin Theater in Chicago. So uh, you can find info about it on our website. Is that where you normally perform, or is it? Kind We've of done a different uh, venue for every concert. We're kind mm-hmm. of testing the waters with a bunch of different venues, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's been really cool because we're, the last concert hit a theater, so we're getting to do it with um, stage lighting and and some really basic stuff with some sort of staging of the instruments and things like that. We did a really great concert hall at Roosevelt University. We did an art gallery, so we like to play in a variety of different spaces for a variety of audiences. Yeah, that's something I see with a lot of groups like this, not just percussion groups, but yeah. music groups in general. They're really testing the, you know, where you can actually put a concert on yeah. and trying to, probably with the goal of, you know, accessibility and as far as getting into a space, but also, you know, um, maybe there's a space opportunity for more lighting or more yeah, theatrical there's, parts. There's a lot of things that go into like playing in alternative spaces. For I think it's uh, there's having the audience feel a little bit more comfortable. You know, like especially in a theater type of situation. We we've played yeah. in like bars and clubs. We we we've done it all. You know, and each of them have kind of a different vibe, and I think attracts a certain type of audience. And it's something that seems to have worked out well for us. Yeah, it's cool having different types of music that from anywhere from like our kind of. New York's neo minimalism thing we've got mm-hmm. going on, and then uh, kind of some originals that Dave has written, and I wrote a song that's kind of more popular. So we try to have like a gamut of different styles, so that when we go in the different venues, we feel like we're gonna meet somebody that's gonna appreciate. Yeah, all of yeah. Them, you know. yeah. It sort of factors into the programming too. Like trying, it's been cool for the Chicago season for each concert finding. <coughs> A space that's appropriate to the music and music that's appropriate to the space yeah, right. in terms of the right. acoustic and the environment and just how <clears throat> I guess of the overall size of it what the sound is whatever it, it's uh, yeah. it's kind of cool that you can sort of put together a whole package deal like that a little bit there's so much great percussion music out there and it's so unbelievably widely varied um, that one of the fun things for us is, is to get to play all that different music and then once we pick the music we like to pick a space that works for it so that, that probably requires more repertoire in your Repertoire, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It's, to have options of well, this space might work better if we do this or that. Yeah, sure. yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a really interesting idea. I like that actually. Um, the Chicago season's been a big step forward for us and a, an extra challenge because um, we basically program entirely new music for every concert. So we're not repeating any repertoire uh, over the course of the year in Chicago. Yeah, as we great. travel on the road, we have sort of our working rep, usually pieces we've played a number of times that we keep using, we feel really comfortable with, and we can play anywhere. Um, but the Chicago season. I'd say we've probably learned as much new music this season because of that Chicago season right. as we learned maybe in the two or three years before that. Cool. Line. The Chicago season is also been cool because we've this is the first year and the first season that we've been able to involve guest artists uh, with us as well. So mm. we we did one concert at Gons Hall at Roosevelt University in Chicago where it was all music for two pianos and percussion. Uh, so we had uh, Amy Briggs and Daniel Schlossberg. Uh, playing with us and it was fantastic. The last concert that we did in Chicago at an art gallery had Marimba Shi'i Wu playing with us and then we're going to have a guest narrator for this next concert in Chicago uh, who's also writing a piece for us. Uh, so Hammer. collaboration. Collaboration is really, really cool. Into, yeah, yeah, and it's something that obviously you can't really do on the road but it's been really fun you know, for us. Some of it we're, we're thinking about trying to take on the road I guess. It's like Chicago has become a little bit of a testing ground. We play a concert. We really like it a lot with guest artists when we have the flexibility of everyone being in town. And then if it works, right, then right. we can you know, approach people out of town about it. Sure. Yeah, yeah that's, that's interesting. Okay, so what do you guys got coming up that's, you know, like one thing that's uh, kind of big right around the corner or next year? Mm-hmm. Or Definitely, like, well, right around the corner would be our next Chicago concert. Which <laughs> On is, April 7th. Oh, which, is, 7th. which is all music that we, we're going to have to start rehearsing immediately. Um, oh, so so that's all new stuff. It's all new stuff. Wow. It's, it's, it's based on, like, the theme of it is, like, politically motivated work. Uh, work. So we're, we're doing a piece right. by Jessica, a couple pieces by Frederick Jevsky. Um, we're doing um, Louis Andreessen, Workers' Union is on there. A new piece that we commissioned by a guy named Ted Hearn. What else is on? David there? Little speaks by David. Little. David Little speaks, speaks softly. softly. Yeah. Um, so it, it's all new stuff for us, and uh, it's, it's going to well, be. Well, good a thing the tour is ending today. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so real quick. So real quick. So we always end the show with a question of the day or the yeah, episode. Nice. So it's for the, for all the viewers out there to you know basically just answer the comments when they leave. You yeah. Because they usually I encourage them to leave comments. So. Can one of you come up with a good question for oh. the viewers, the active viewers? Oh, no. Yeah, it's up to you. On it's like spot. spontaneous. Rob, wow. This is and it, it can be anything. It doesn't even have to be about... Like last week, it was how the Buffalo Bills signed Terrell Owens. Oh, wow. What, cool. and, and I sort of pulled them. So it can be anything. Wow. Go. Red wine or white? 
Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> We're going to have lots of that tonight. <laughs> well, thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. And uh, have good luck in the April 7th concert. All right. See you next time, everybody.